I then forced the blade of my pen knife through them until I met with some hard obstacle. Scraping against it, I discovered it to be a solid mass of iron from which its peculiar wavy feel. As I passed the blade along, I concluded to be a chain cable. The only course now was left me was to retrace my way to the box and there either yield to my sad fate or to try to tranquilize my mind as to be admitted of my arranging some plan of escape. set upon about the attempt and succeeded after innumerable difficulties in giving back. As I sank utterly exhausted upon the knackers, Tiger threw himself at full length by my side and seemed as if desirous by his caresses of consoling me in my troubles and urging me to bear them with fortitude. Singularity of his behavior at length forced forcibly arrested my attention. After licking my face and hands for a few some minutes, he would suddenly cease doing so and utter a low whine. Upon reaching out my hand toward him, I then invariably found him lying on his back with his paws uplifted. This conduct so frequently appeared strange, and I could in no matter account for it. As the dog seemed distressed, I concluded that he had received some injury. Taking his paws in my hands, I examined them one by one, but found no sign of any hurt. I then supposed him hungry and gave him a piece of a large piece of ham, which he devoured with avidity. And afterward, however, resuming his extraordinary maneuvers, I now imagined that he was suffering like myself with its, the torments of thirst, and was about adopting this conclusion as the true one, when the idea occurred to me that I had only yet examined his paws, that there might possibly be a wound or some part, portion of one of his body or head. The latter I fell carefully over, but found nothing. On passing my hand, however, along his back, I perceived a slight erection of the hair extending completely across it. Probing this with my finger, I discovered a string, and tracing it up, found that it had encircled the whole body. Upon a closer scrutiny, I came across a small sort of the feeling we had the feeling of letter paper through which the string had been fastened in such a manner as to bring it immediately beneath the left shoulder of the animal. The thought instantly occurred to me that the paper was a note from Augustus, and that some unaccountable accident having happened to prevent his relieving me from my dungeon, had devised this me method of acquainting me with the true state of affairs. Trembling with eagerness, I now commenced another search for my phosphorus match and papers. I had a confused recollection of having put them carefully away just before falling asleep. And indeed, previously to my last journey to the trap, I had been able to remember the exact spot where I had deposited them. But now I endeavored in vain to call to mind and busy myself for a full hour in a fruitless and vexatious search. For the missing articles. Never surely was there a more tantalizing state of anxiety and suspense. At length, when I'm groping about with my head close to the ballast, near the opening of the box, and outside of it, I perceived a faint glimmering of light in the direction of the steerage. Greatly surprised, I endeavored to make my way toward it, in a, it as it appeared to be but a few feet from my position. Scarcely had I moved with intention when I lost sight of the, for the, the glimmer entirely. And before I could bring it into view again, I was obliged to feel along the box until I had exactly resumed my original situation. Now moving my head with caution to and fro, I found that proceeding slowly with great care and in opposite direction to that which I had first started, I was unable to draw near the light, still keeping it in view. Presently, I came directly upon it, having squeezed my way through innumerable narrow windings and found it that proceeded from some fragments of my matches lying in an empty barrel turning upon its side. I wonder 
I was wondering how they came to such a place and my help hand fell upon two or three pieces of paper wax, which had been evidently mumbled by the dog. I concluded at once that he had devoured the whole supply of candles and I thought hopes of ever being able to read the note of Augustus. The small remnants of the wax were so matched up as among other rubbish in the barrel that I despaired of deriving any service of them from them and left them as they were. The phosphorus of which there was only two, a speck or two, I gathered up as well as I could and returned with it, as after much difficulty to my box, where Tiger had all the while remained. What to do next I could not tell. The hole was so immense, intensely dark that I could not see my hand, however close I would hold it to my face. The white slip of paper could barely be discerned, and not even that when I looked at it directly, by determining the exterior portion of the retina toward it, that is to say, by surveying it slightly askance, I found that it became in some measure perceptible. Thus the gloom of my prison may be imagined, and the note of my friend, and if indeed it were a note from him, seemed only likely to throw me into further trouble by disquieting to no purpose in my already enfeebled and agitated mind. In vain I resolved in my brain a multitude of absurd expedients for procuring light. Such expedients, precisely as a man in the perturbed sleep, occasioned by opium, would be apt to fall upon for a similar purpose. Each and all for of which appear by turns to the dreamer for the most reasonable and most pro preposterous of conceptions. This is the reasoning of imaginative faculties flicker, alternately, one above the other. At last an idea occurred to me which seemed rational, and which gave me cause to wonder very justly that I had not entertained before. I placed a slip of paper on the back of the book, and collecting the fragments of the phosphorus matches which I had brought from collecting the fragments of the phosphorus which I had brought from the barrel, laid them together over the paper, and I then tried with the palm of my hand, rubbed the hole over quickly and yet steadily. A clear light diffused itself immediately through the whole surface, and there had been, had there been any writing upon it, I should not have experienced the least difficulty. <sighs> I'm sure in reading it. Not a syllable was there, however, nothing but a dreary and unsatisfactory blank. The illumination died away in a few seconds, and my heart died away within me as I went, as it went. I have before stated more than once that my intellect, for some period prior to this, had been in a condition nearly bordering on idiocy. There were, to be sure, momentary intervals of perfect sanity, and now, now none even of energy, but these were few. It must be remembered that I had been, for many days certainly, inhaling the most, almost pestilential atmosphere of a close hole in a whaling vessel, and for a long portion of that time but scantily supplied with water. For the last fourteen or sixteen hours I had none, nor had I slept during that time. Salt provisions the most exciting kind had been my chief, and, indeed, since the loss of the mutton, my only supply of food, with the exception of the sea biscuit, and the latter, these latter were utterly used to, useless to me, as they were too dry and hard to be swallowed in the swollen and parched condition of my throat. I was now in a high state of fever, in every respect exceedingly ill. This will account for the fact that many miserable hours of despondency they last after my last adventure with the phosphorus. But the thought suggested itself that I had examined only one side of the paper. I shall not attempt to describe my feelings of rage, for I believe I was more angry than anything else when the egregious oversight I had committed flashed suddenly upon my perception. The blunder itself would have been unimportant had not my own folly and impetuosity rendered it otherwise. 
and my disappointment upon and not finding some words upon the slip. I childishly thrown it, torn it into pieces and thrown it away. It was impossible to say where. From the worst part of this dilemma, I was relieved by the sagacity of Tiger. Having got, after a long search, a small piece of the note, I put it to the dog's nose and endeavored to make him understand that he must bring me the rest of it. To my astonishment, for I taught him none of the usual tricks for which this breed are famous, he seemed to enter at once in my meeting, and rummaged about for a few moments, soon found another considerable portion. Bring me this, he paused a while and rubbing his nose against my hand, appeared to be waiting for my approval of what he had done. I patted him on the head, when he immediately came made off again. It was not for some minutes before he came back, but when he did, did come, he brought with him a large slip, which proved to be all the paper missing. It had been torn, it seems, into only into three pieces. <sighs> Luckily, I had had no trouble in finding what few fragments of the phosphorus were left, being guided in the distinct glow of one or two particles still emitted. My difficulties had taught me the necessity of caution, and I now took time to reflect upon what I was about to do. It was very probable, I considered, that, that some words were written upon the side of the table which had not been examined, but which side was that? Fitting the pieces together gave me a new clue of this in respect, although it assured me that the words, if there were any, would be found on, other, on, on one side, and connected in a proper manner as written. There was the greater necessity of ascertaining the point of question beyond a doubt, as the phosphorus remaining would be altogether insufficient by it for a third attempt, should I fail in the one I was not about to make. I placed the paper on a on a book as before, and sat for some minutes thoughtfully revolving the matter over in my hand in my mind. At last, I thought it barely possible that the written side might have been have some unevenness on this surface, which a delicate sense of feeling might enable me to, to detect. I determined to make the experiment and passed my finger very carefully over the side which first presented itself. Nothing, however, was perceptible as I turned the paper of just the book. I now and again carefully carried my forefinger cautiously along when I was aware of an exceedingly slight but the still discernible glow which followed as it proceeded. This I knew must arise from some very minute remaining particles of the phosphorus with which I covered the paper in my previous attempt. The other or underside then was that on which lay the writing if writing there should finally prove to be. Again, I turned the note and w went to work as I had previously done. Having rubbed in the phosphorus, a brilliancy ensued as before, but this time several messages, a line of messages in a large hand, and apparently a red ink, became distinctly visible. The glimmer, although sufficiently bright, was but momentary. Still, had I not been too greatly excited, there would have been ample time enough for me to peruse the whole th three sentences before me, for I saw there were only three. In my anxiety, however, to read it all at once, I succeeded in reading the se seven concluding words, which appeared, Blood, your life depends upon lying clothes. Had I been able to ascertain the entire contents of the note, the full meaning of the admonition which my friend had thus attempted to, to convey, that admo admonition, even though although it should have revealed a story of disaster of the most unspeakable, could not, I am firmly convinced, have imbued in my mind with one tith of the harrowing yet indefinable horror with which I was inspired the 
A fragmentary warning thus received. And blood, too, that word of all words, so rife with all, all times of mystery and suffering and terror. How trebly full of import did it now appear, how chilly and heavily disjointed as it thus was from any foregoing words to qualify a runner distinct, did its vague syllables fall amid the deep gloom of my prison and into the innermost recesses of my soul.